Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Phil. Welcome to another video. Previously, we had a look at online shopping for cheap Windows 98 retro PC gaming computer parts. I get a lot of comments that I use parts that are hard to find and cost a lot, so this was an attempt to build something that is readily available and doesn't cost a lot. So in the previous video, we shopped for some parts, we put it all together on a test bench, and in this video, we're gonna do a lot. We're gonna have a look at the, the BIOS, I'm gonna talk a bit about configuring Windows, we'll talk about the drivers, we're gonna have a look at a lot of benchmarks, comparing the onboard GPU as well as the dedicated Radeon 9550. We're gonna have a look at AMD's cool and quiet to save some power, we're gonna measure power draw under idle and under load, and we're also going to benchmark the hard drive speed and maybe a few other things that I'm forgetting right now. So without further ado, enjoy this video. Let's have a quick look in the BIOS. I had to replace the battery, it was flat, and then you just enter the current date and time. In the CPU configuration section, it actually supports cool and quiet, so that's something I will have a look later. Does that actually work in Windows 98? And also, by default, the memory was running at 166, so I changed that to 200. I noticed a lot of comments about using a SATA hard drive with Windows 98, and that's not an issue at all. You just gotta make sure that if the bus has an option for legacy or compatibility mode, to enable that, it basically runs in ID mode. I'm not using a floppy drive, so I just disable it in the bus. And usually I disable the serial and the parallel ports. That's not something you really have to do, it's just a habit of mine. I'm used to doing this, so I'm doing this with this machine as well. And I got another comment about using a USB keyboard and mouse. It's not an issue, however, you have to turn on the legacy USB support, because otherwise you won't have a working mouse in DOS or when you try to install Windows 98. Let's dive straight into some benchmarks. We've got the synthetic tests first. In Final Reality, the robot test, we're getting 145 for the integrated graphics and 151 for the Radeon. In the City benchmark, we're getting 194 for the integrated graphics and 185 for the Radeon. Moving on to 3 Mark 99, we can see a much bigger difference between the onboard and the dedicated Radeon, 7,682 improves to 13,483. In 3D Mark 2000, the trend continues, 3,159 for the onboard graphics improves to 10,763 for the Radeon. And finally, 3D Mark 2001 SE, we've got 1,721, which improves to 7,743. Next up, we're going to have a look at direct 3D benchmarks. They all run at the 1024 by 768 resolution in 32-bit colors. First up, we've got Dracan, 18 FPS for the onboard and 128 for the Radeon, so that's a massive boost in performance. Expendable goes from 28 to 167, and also incoming gets a massive boost from 25 all the way to 268. So we can see a massive difference in performance with the Dark 3D benchmarks. And next up, we're looking at OpenGL results, also run at the 1024 by 768 and 32 bit colors. We've got 32 FPS for GL Quake, which improves to 233 with the Radeon. In Quake 2, we're getting 23 FPS with the onboard and 238 with the Radeon. And in Quake 3, we're going from 37 FPS to 187 with the Radeon. We had Two issues with GL Quake, there are some graphics errors with the onboard graphics and the MDK2 benchmark which just crashed the machine. The dedicated Radeon graphics gets 158 FPS in the MDK2 benchmark. Because the performance with the Radeon was so good at 1024 by 768, I did another run of the benchmarks at 1600 by 1200. Now, that is basically the 4K resolution of back in the day. So let's have a look what results we're getting. We're getting 81 FPS for Expandable, 63 for Dracon. In Gelquake, we're getting 109. In Quake 2, we're getting 73. In Quake 3, 57. And in MDK2, we're getting 51. So this machine is powerful enough to run all these games at the 1600 by 1200 resolution, which is very recommendable. That's actually a really good performance result. 
I'm trying to benchmark the hard drive with the ATDO disk benchmark, but we're getting really strange results of up to 500, 600 megabytes per second. So I might have to try a different benchmark and see if that one actually works. Okay, back with another benchmark, roadkill's disk speed, access time around 14 milliseconds, and we're getting around 30 megabytes per second. So that sounds a lot more realistic. Now, this might be a limitation of the hard drive. So to really find out if, uh, to find out what the controller can do, I'm going to clone the hard drive onto an SSD and see how that all works out. Okay, we've got a 120 gigabyte Blitzwolf SSD, and the results, they look interesting. The linear read speeds improved somewhat, but look at the random reads. Some, some of them are higher than the linear reads. That's really odd as well. As a last-ditch effort, I updated the latest storage driver from 2007 from the SIS website, but we're getting the same weird results. The good news, however, is that the performance is really snappy. It's mostly to do with the fast processor. And the other thing that's worth pointing out is that the SATA controllers are compatible with, compatible with SATA 3 hard drives. That's not the case with a lot of via chipset motherboards. I've also got some power draw results. So the entire machine, that's basically the power supply plugged into the power measurement device. At idle on the desktop, we're getting 57 watts. In Quake 2, running at 1600 by 1200 and VSync turned off, we're getting a power draw reading of 85 watts. And in Expandable at 1024 by 768 with VSync enabled, we're getting a power reading of 77 watts. This is kind of my power efficiency test. How much power does it take to run Expandable at 60 FPS locked? I just want to briefly talk about installing Windows 98 and all the drivers and stuff. So basically I installed Windows 98 straight off the installation disk and then I installed the chipset driver and this is the driver disk that came with the motherboard and these are a gold mine. Very often you get drivers for other motherboards as well. Now we've got the one with the SIS 760GX so there's an AGB driver which I installed. There's also a SATA driver and initially I had issues with the hard drive performance. It would uh, basically have little skips and pauses but after installing the SATA driver which very likely activated the DMA mode as well. Everything was fine. I also installed the VGA, uh, VGA graphics card for the uh, SIS video card and there are some drivers for the Ethernet and there's also somewhere an audio driver. And uh, let's have a look in the device manager. So here's the SATA hard drive that shows up. Here's the Radeon 9550. We've got the SIS ID RAID controller. That's the SATA controller. And we've got the monitor here. Also, the Ethernet card is working. We've got a sound card with a joystick port. And also, the USB is working. So all devices are detected. There are uh, no unknown devices. So everything worked pretty smooth. Here we have some CPU set information. So it's the Sempron 2800 Plus for the Socket 754. It's running at 1.6 gigahertz with an 8x multiplier. And the memory runs at 200 megahertz. And we've got the timings here. So it basically took the SPD values of the stick and configured the BIOS. I've also installed the unofficial service pack for Windows 98 version 3.53. I do this on most of my machines. It's not really necessary, but it gives you uh, peace of mind, basically. With the Radeon card, we're getting some nice driver options. Now, I use custom settings, basically, to disable the virtual synchronization. That's recommended for benchmarking. However, we also have anti-aliasing and uh, texture filtering options to make our games look nicer. So that's really where you can uh, assign some of this raw performance, not just for getting higher frames per second, but to make your games look nicer. So I do recommend that you play around with these settings. Uh, it can make quite a big difference, especially the texture filtering is something I usually want to have turned on when I play some games. Let's have a go at enabling the cool and quiet option. This is basically a technology to save energy when the computer is not doing anything. So the first thing you have to do is turn it on in the BIOS and then restart our machine. Unfortunately, when I try to install the software, it's telling me that AMD's cool and quiet technology is not enabled on this system. So I had a quick look on the internet and apparently only AMD Sempron processors 
with the model number 3000 plus or higher support cool and quiet. So I really wanted to give this a go. So I swapped the CPU and we now got an AMD Sempron 3300 plus. So this one runs quite a bit higher at two gigahertz. Let's see if we can install it now without any errors. Looks fine, let's restart the machine and see if cool and quiet is actually working. Unfortunately, that also didn't work. It seems to have made things worse. It now downclocked the CPU to 1.8 gigahertz. So maybe there's more going on. I had a quick look in the, in the power management options and changed the profile, but that didn't do anything. So if you've got an idea of how to configure the Athlon 64 or the uh, Sempron with cool and quiet under Windows 98, let me know down below in the description. So let's wrap up this project. Performance is fantastic, especially with the Radeon. With the onboard GPU, performance is rather limited, but I was surprised that actually that most of the games actually uh, ran fine. There were some issues with OpenGL, but really the dedicated graphics card is only $10, so uh, you don't want to save there. In terms of performance, look, you can play at 1024 by 768. It will basically run any Windows 98 game, and you can play around with the eye candy options, uh, anti-aliasing and texture filtering and all of that. Or you can choose to run games at the higher 1600 by 1200 or 1280 by 1024 resolution. The build was very smooth. I didn't have too many issues. Having the driver CD definitely helped. I had initial issues with the storage device, but installing the SATA driver fixed that. We got some odd performance readings with the SATA controller, but performance in general was very snappy and high, so it's not something I would be too concerned about. And the cool and quiet technology didn't work either, but everything else worked fine, all the drivers installed, and I'm generally very pleased with the performance, and this is a lot faster than I would have thought uh, this machine would end up being. And that's it for this video, but there will be another one where we're going to focus on running actual games. So I'm going to hook this up to my capture box and try out a few games, older ones, not so older ones, and something more demanding and newer, and seeing how this machine will cope. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with another video.